Hi, this is Mark from LongIslandWatch.com, and welcome to Watch and Learn number 11. Today, I got something that I probably the most requested thing so far for the series. It's been emailed, it's been in comments, people have talked to me over the phone about it, so I finally broke down and did it. Uh, I'm going to do a watch and learn on the slide rule bezel, uh, the aviation slide rule bezel. Uh, when I think slide rule watches, uh, two watches, or uh, three watches, I guess, come to mind, really. Uh, the Navitimer, the Citizen Nighthawk, and the, uh, the Blue Angel Citizen that I remember as a kid looking in magazines, and the bezel was all full of a jumble of numbers and stuff, and I was like, how do you use this thing? Little did I know I go into engineering uh, but unfortunately by the time I got into engineering slide rules had gone the way of the dinosaur uh, everyone was using calculators uh, there were still a couple of people in the office that, believe it or not that used slide rules uh, up until the mid to late 2000s uh, crazy as it seems but they preferred it over the calculator uh, but anyway I've got a Seiko Flight Master lined up uh, I'm going to go through a couple of different examples, show you how to use it, how you can use it in everyday life. Believe it or not, you can, uh, you know, maybe with a, a good pair of glasses and some patience, uh, you can use it uh, to multiply numbers, divide numbers, tax on a, excuse me, not tax, oh, you could do tax on a bill, you could do a, a tip on a restaurant bill, and then a bunch of different uh, units conversions, which I think might be uh, more appropriate and, and maybe, you know, easier for, for most people to do. But anyway, I'm going to go over uh, how the slide rule works and I'm going to discuss logarithms in general. I'm going to do really, I'll keep it brief, a couple of minutes just showing you what the log is, the inverse of the log. It's on your calculator. It's on your phone. Uh, maybe just know what it is just so you know it's there. Uh, but that's really what makes the entire slide rule possible. This thing invented four or five hundred years ago uh, that they call the logarithm. And it's all over science. If you're a science person, uh, you certainly know what they are. Uh, in, in layman, you know, in, in layman everyday life, certainly not. We don't come across it. But man, it's used in probably everything you touch. And then I'll discuss, you know, again, I'll discuss why the scale is in is a logarithmic scale is a very important reason for that anyway like i said i got the flight master lined up and we'll go over there and we'll take a look at it in close detail i'll do a quick wristwatch check uh well first i'm wearing an orient with this slide rule bezel uh had to do had to wear one for the video right and then you guys saw this in the the blue watches video whoa the uh yacht master 40 with the smoke in blue dial. Anyway, that's about it for that. Uh, let's go over and take a look at the Flightmaster slide rule bezel. So before we get into actually using the slide rule bezel that I have here on this Seiko, I want to discuss logarithms uh, just for a minute. Uh, so the term logarithm uh, is, is a function that was developed 400 years ago or so, probably more than that. And uh, you might see it on your calculator as log of x, and then the inverse of it is 10 raised to the x. Uh, I've written a little 10 here, that's the base number. Uh, most calculators, it's understood that it's 10 and you cannot modify it, but on scientific calculators, uh, this number will be a variable as well. If you wanted to do like a binary logarithm, you can make it a base of two. It could be a base of anything you want. Uh, you can make it the base of the function e, and then it becomes the natural log, which is ln, which is another function that's probably on your calculator, or at least on a scientific calculator. So what is this logarithm? Well, if you have a base 10 log, so log of the number 10 to the base 10 is equal to 1. It sounds complicated, but all you're really saying is that 10 raised to the power 1 is 10. So 10 raised to the power 1 is 10. These two are just inverses of one another. That's how you get from one to the other. So likewise, the log of 100 to base 10 is 2 because 10 raised to the 2 power, which is 10 squared, 10 times 10 is 100. 10 raised to the 2 is 100. Very simple stuff. Um, why is it helpful or why is the logarithm really handy? Well, for one thing, and probably you know the most important thing for using the bezel for the calculations that we'll do, is if you have two numbers, A and B, any numbers you want them to be, if you want to multiply them and find the product, well, if you just take those two numbers and put them inside a logarithmic function, the answer actually becomes the log of one number plus the log of the other number. So the log of a times b is the same as the log of a plus the log of b. 
you could punch it into a calculator and see, you know, make this 25, make this 35. Do the log of each number. Write those numbers down. They're going to be, you know, small numbers. If you did 25 and 35, it's going to be one point something. Add them up and then do 10 raised to that number and you will get the actual product. It sounds like a lot of steps, but what you've done is you've taken multiplication and you made it into addition. Addition can be represented on a, on a ruler, on two moving scales, and that's what the slide rule is. And this is a rotary slide rule, but a, a real slide rule is linear um, and obviously has a stop on it, but you've taken multiplication, made it into addition. Likewise, you take division, division just becomes subtraction. It's very powerful. Generally, people do not add on slide rules. It's for multiplication, division. Uh, it can do uh, squaring. It can do getting square roots, uh, trigonometry functions, a whole slew of stuff. Very powerful. Uh, and w one other thing I just wanted to show, which is interesting, and we'll look at it on the bezel. On a logarithmic scale, there is no zero. That's the first thing to notice because you can't have a log of zero. 10 to 20, 20 to 40, 40 to 80. This is a true logarithmic scale. If you notice, every time I double a number, the distance is the same. So 10 to 20 is the same as 20 to 40, is the same as 40 to 80, 80 to 160. You, as you can see, as you get into bigger numbers, it really gets compressed. So the lines are getting very close together. Uh, so that's just something to re recognize when you're using the bezel, and, and you'll see that the, the scale certainly spreads out. So I'm going to put this away. I think that's enough uh, log stuff, and then we'll get into the actual use. So in front of you here, I have the Seiko Flightmaster uh, SNA411P. And then just to show you, this is the manual to use the rotary slide rule. Uh, it's very thick, but it's in a multitude of languages. But even so, the English version is, the English part of the manual is 30-something pages long. So it is quite complex. There is a lot to know. I'm certainly not going to go over all of it. Uh, but, you know, you'll get an idea of how to use it. And if you want to explore it a little bit more, uh, you know, you'll be more than welcome to. This manual is actually available online if you wanted to read it. Um, I think if you just type Rotary Slide Rule Manual you know, Seiko into Google, you'll probably get Seiko's link to this actual, uh, the PDF for this manual. So here it is up close. It's very complicated. It looks like it's complicated, and that's because it is complicated. There's a lot of stuff going on. I'm going to try to start myself from the outside and work my way to the inside. So the first thing you'll notice is in the yellow here, this should be the easy stuff. N E E S E S. These are just compass markings. Nothing to do with the slide rule. Uh, a lot of the bezels have this. This is just your general compass markings, and these are little three-degree increment ticks for finding direction. Nothing to do with using the slide rule, really, but you can rotate. You know, this rotates. This is bidirectional. rotates both ways. So if you want to use it as a compass, you know, once you know one heading, then it works out very well. So now coming in, I'm going to look at this bezel, and you'll see I'm actually going to start at the 10 because that's the, that's the smallest increment on the slide rule. Now, even though it says 10, that doesn't mean you can't do 1.1.01 because remember everything's in powers of 10 so this is going to go from 10 11 12 13 14 here's 20 it's going to get more and more compressed 30 40 50 60 is at the top i think this is just arbitrary to make 60 line up at the top of the with the top of the dial cuz that's where 60 is supposed to be uh, 70 80 90 here's 90 and then we're back to 10 so this would really be 100 if we were counting from 10 uh, remember, logs of 10, everything's in increments of 10, or, or factors of 10, if you will. You'll also see on this bezel, I see naught, stat, fuel pounds, oil pounds, imperial gallons, U.S. gallons, kilograms. Oh boy, what else is there? Pounds, thousand feet, liters. Those are all for units conversions, and we'll go over those uh, towards the end. That's probably one of the cooler features of the slide rule, because you really don't need to know much about the slide rule to use it. Uh, so they're pretty nifty. Uh, so if you remember, like I said before, every time something doubles, it's the same distance. So if you look, the distance from 10 to 20, if you were to t take this arc distance, is the same distance as 20 to 40, is the same distance as 40 to 80, would be the same distance from 80 to 160. 160 would now be 16. 160 to 320, which would be 16 to 32. It keeps working. It works out perfectly, believe me. Okay. So this is the bezel scale. Now coming into the dial on the chapter ring, 
we have another logarithmic scale. It's the same exact scale. It lines up piece for piece when the bezel's in its home position. 70, 80, 90, 10, 11, 12. Okay, got that? Now, if I come further down the chapter ring, you'll see 110, 120, 130, 140. These are time markings. 80 minutes is 1 hour and 20 minutes. 70 minutes is 1 hour and 10 minutes. See what they're doing there? They're just... They're just bringing time from minutes to hours. Two hours, 30 minutes is 150. All the way up to, here's nine hours, which would be 540 minutes, so it's right up to 54. Again, remember, we, we had to go up a factor of 10 because we crossed that 10 line. 70 minutes was an hour and 10 minutes. So this is now 90. This is 100 minutes. Not Even though it says 10, we have to think of it as 100 because we're going up a scale because we're going clockwise. Okay. And then further inside that should be something that you're all familiar with if you've watched the other watch and learns, uh, the tachymeter or the tachymeter uh, showing you, you know, uh, time per event, basically. And you can watch that watch and learn and, and learn how to use that one. So that's all the markings on the bezel. Like I said, it is... <laughs> It's, it's a lot to look at. I was going to do this video under under the microscope again, but I just felt you lost the feel for it, um, especially when we start moving the bezel around. So let's do a simple multiplication problem uh, with the slide rule on this Seiko. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to, well, let's think of a problem, right? Let's do, uh, I don't know, 40 times 20. Uh, we know the answer is 800, uh, but let's see how the slide rule gets it. So the first thing to that's important is that Everything, if everybody said in the beginning, everything's to the base of 10. So I know the Navitimer, I think some others have the 10 is a red number, which is, is important because everything's going to line up to the 10 when you're doing your calculations. But we're going to do 20 times 40 or 40 times 20. It doesn't matter. So let's take the 20 and line it up. So I'm rotating the bezel until the 20 lines up. I'm going to bring it, just flip it over until the 20 lines up to the 10 marking. Okay. So do you see now the 10 on the inside here? is lined up with the 20 on the rotating bezel. So I said before that multiplying in logarithms is like adding. So we're going to go from the 10, and we're going to go pay a visit to the number 40, or 4, as it were. But for our, for our purposes, it's going to be 40, because everything can be done in, you know, in, in increments of 10. So if I go to the 40 or the 4, I see I'm pointing at 80 or 8. So now you have to start to track your exponents. 20 can be expressed as 2 times 10 to the 1. 40 can be expressed as 4 times 10 to the 1. You take those two exponent numbers, 1 and 1, you add them, you get 2. So the answer is 8 times 10 to the 2. 800. 8 times 100 is 800. The Seiko book kind of goes through a little bit of a different method to work it out, but I, I guess that's assuming you don't know how to do logarithms at all. It doesn't obviously give you any uh, intelligence to what a logarithm is. It just kind of gives you some, some fast methods to calculate stuff. But that's really what you have to do. You have to keep an eye on the number of exponents that you are multiplying, and you have to add them up at the end when you get the result. The real way you do it with, with a real slide rule, I mean, a real slide rule is not an easy tool to use. It, it does take training. You have, to, you have to know how to use it. So this is no different. You have to figure out how to use this. You have to know how to use it. OK, so now that we did multi, uh, multiplication, let's do a division problem. So now I'm going to say, OK, let's do something where it might actually be like a real world thing. So let's say we go out to dinner with friends. and we're out with, I don't know, seven friends, and the bill, I'm going to do something again that we know the answer to. Let's say the bill is $210. So 210 obviously is not on this slide rule, but 21 is, which is 2.1 times 10 to the 2, right? So I'm going to take the 21, and let's say we went out with uh, how many friends? I don't know. Uh, let's say seven friends. So I'm going to line, go line it up to the 70. So I'm going to take the 21, and get it over to the 70. Okay. So we have the 21 lined up with the 7. And so we can read off the 10 that the bill is $30 each. Again, now you got to watch your exponents. You know, this was 2.1 times 10 to the second power. This is 7 people. So this is 7 times 10 to the 0 power. 
You just have to watch when you now subtract your decimals. Uh, again, the Seiko book goes through this. When you subtract your exponents, you may have to take away another exponent because you're, the way you're going around the scale. Anyway, that will give you an answer of 30. Okay, great. So now it's 30 bucks a person. Now let's go one step further and say you wanted to add a 20% tip. Well, that's, now it gets simple. We're just going to go from 10 because percent is in the same scale. We're going to go up to the 12. That's 1.0, 1.2, 20% tip. We see a 20% tip. We can read this. It's $36 a person for your bill. It really, it is handy. You can do it. You may need a pair of spectacles to read it, uh, but it does work out. You can do the same thing with different currencies. Uh, if you're traveling to another country and the currency is fluctuating and, um, you, you know, you, you know the exchange rate, you can figure out, you know, how much something is going to cost. Okay, so that's multiplication and division on the slide rule. I want to go over one more thing before we call it a day. And this might be the more interesting part of it. So I said before we have all these markings, naught and stat. There's a bunch of units conversions, but they can only be used in conjunction with one another. Obviously, you this is nautical mile and statute mile. You obviously cannot compare a, a nautical mile to pounds of oil or pounds of fuel. That doesn't make any sense. Uh, but if you do want to con, you know, figure out you know, if you want to go. So let's rotate. Let's stop, let's stop talking and let's start doing, right? So let's say you have 10 or 1 nautical miles on a boat. How many statute miles is that? It's pointing somewhere around the 1.15 mark, which is which is correct. Uh, it's somewhere around there. It's like it's like 15% uh, more. So this is really good. If it was 100, it would be 115. If it was 1,000, it would be 11, what would it be? 15? No, <laughs> it'll be 1150. Again, everything's in powers of 10. You can just keep adding a zero or moving the decimal point. So let's see what else is on here that might be interest, uh, might be of interest. The fuel and oil thing you want, you can go read the Seiko manual. It's not important. Imperial gallons to US gallons, probably not something that you'd need in everyday life. Although, you know, it's there if you need it. But how about kilometers? Well, kilometers is a good one because sometimes, we, you know, somebody will give us a distance, you know, if they're from another country, you know, uh, we're in the U.S., we obviously use miles. Uh, but so let's say you can do kilometers to statute miles because those are land miles, not nautical miles. Uh, so let's say 10, let's, so I'm going to rotate the yellow arrow right over here. And I just want to say, you know, this is something that Seiko does to make it less you know, to cram everything in that they can. See the statute miles is here and there's a yellow arrow. That's the marker for statute. See this fuel pounds is stuck next to the 80. Well, they bracket it here, the little brackets, and you can see the triangle. That triangle is for pounds of fuel. So let's say you're at 10 statute miles. How many kilometers is that? So you read around. Ah, okay. It's right over here. So 10 statute miles is 16 kilometers. Or a little, you know, obviously the scale is a little more refiner than that. It's a little bit more different, but you know, there's your answer. Pretty cool. And likewise, now you could do kilometers backwards. And again, you have to watch your scales and, and see where you're going. If you're crossing over uh, that threshold, you may have to move the decimal point. Now another distance scale and also you can see it up here, let it come in, is the 1,000 foot or 1,000 feet scale. That works in conjunction with the miles, the statute miles, and with the kilometers. You can read them all off at the same time, but now you might have to start moving uh, decimal points around. And the Seiko book actually does a good job in this respect because they tell you when you're converting from one thing to another, you do have to move the decimal around. Uh, so let's go back and let's say statute miles. I mean, we should know offhand, or maybe some of us don't remember, but a mile is 5,280 feet. So if I put the statute at 1 and I come over here to 1,000 feet, look at that. It's somewhere in the zone. It's right around 5,300 if you look at this. Again, this is thousands of feet. 
If you look right around here, it's pointing right around this in the cor correct direction. I think some of this stuff, they have to jostle the graphics around just a bit to get it all to fit. I'm not sure it's all, you know, totally right. Uh, so let's see, 51, 52, 53. It should be 5280. I mean, it looks like it's 5300 or a, a tad more, but you get the idea. It still works. The last one that is, is handy, at least I think is handy, is kilograms to pounds or pounds to kilograms. So let's say I want to know how many kilograms I weigh. So I take the Whoops, not oil pounds. It does, the thing is so confusing. Uh, gallons, kilo, kilograms. I don't want kilograms. I want to, I'm going to start in pounds. So there I am, pounds. So let's say I want to figure out how many kilos I am. Okay, so I weigh 160 pounds. So I'm going to take the pounds marker and I'm going to move it over to the 16. And here's where it's going to get to a little bit dicey because you have to start to watch the um, position of the decimal and again the Seiko book takes care of that for you uh, but if you know in your head roughly you know what you know about what the conversion is uh, you'll be able to really pinpoint it with this you won't need to know anything else uh, because if you know a kilogram is more or less than a pound then you'll know which way the decimal has to move uh, but anyway uh, so I'm putting one six I'm 160 pounds remember it's a, a factor of 10 uh, over here to the pound scale and I'm gonna look for the kilograms now I don't know where it is. It's over here. So I'm going to find kilograms. And I'm going to look. I'm going to come down. And I'm right around 73 kilos. So that's about it. And there's more you can do with it. Obviously, like I said, there's the the pounds of uh, fuel, um, which in everyday life, you know, unless you're actually flying a plane. And I don't see, if, if you were in the cockpit of an aircraft, it, you're vibrating around. Can you read this thing? I don't know. If you're a pilot, you know, <laughs> chime in and let me know. I do agree that it's a very valuable piece. Uh, if all else fails, this will work. Uh, you know, boats still carry marine chronometers in case, you know, and sextants in case all forms of, you know, location you know, disappear, you know, electrical failure or whatever. Uh, but if you're flying a plane, you have a big electrical failure. I, I think navigation might be the, the least of your concerns. I, again, it, it's a very powerful tool. You know, it's on a lot of watches. Hopefully now you'll look at it and maybe you'll play around with it and do something cool. Uh, impress a friend. I don't know. So this has been Mark from LongIslandWatch.com showing you the slide rule bezel, in this case the aviation slide rule bezel, on a Seiko SNA411P Flightmaster. If you like this video, please like it. If you have not subscribed to our channel, please do so at this time. If you have any questions or comments, please put them down below, and I'll be sure to address them as soon as I can. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.